Welcome UCL fans. It's been a long time, but I am back. I'm going to be actually reviewing weeks two through four in this one. I know it's been a while. I haven't done one since week one. I uh, wanted to do one week two, but trying to watch all the matches with two of them be taking place in almost an hour long matchup for it. And I try to watch both sides before I do these recordings. And then week three, like I said, I went on vacation and I came back. Uh, as week four was going on. So I'm just now all caught up and reviewed with everything, aware of all the changes that have been going on, and we're here to cover everything that's happened over the last couple weeks. And hopefully, moving forward, I should have every single one available going forward. So we'll start off going back a few weeks to week two. Um, a lot of good matches that took place. We're just going to Going through my notes here, we had the Carolina Keldios, who were 0-1, taking on the Chicago Buffalons, who were also 0-1. And this was the one of the longer matches, because this did come down to a time limit decision, and it was a 6-2 victory for the Chicago Buffalons, where the MVP of the match was the Celestila from the Chicago Buffalons, who managed to pick up all four kills for the team. Uh, after that, we had the Philadelphia for Alligators taking on the Pittsburgh Pichus, and it looks like it was a uh, it came down to a 1-0 victory in favor of the Pittsburgh Pichus. Um, the MVP of the match looks like it went to the Lopini uh, from the Mega Lopini from Pittsburgh Pichus, who did manage to pick up uh, three kills this matchup. Moving on after that, we had the Toronto Tokikis taking on the Tucson Terrakions, and it was a 3-0 victory in favor of the Tucson Terrakions. Uh, MVP of the matchup went to Chestnut, who did manage to pick up uh, three kills in that match. And then moving on to the final matchup, we had the Grand Canyon Greninjas uh, taking on the New York Mankeys, and it was a 2-0 victory for the New York Mankeys. MVP of the match came to uh, Heatran, who did manage to pick up four kills. And then rankings that happened then going in at the end of week two. In eighth place, we had the Carolina Keldios, who had a 0-2 record with a differential score of negative six. Uh, the Grand Canyon Greninjas with also an 0-2 record and a differential score of negative five. Uh, in sixth place, we had the Chicago Buffalons, who were 1-1 one and, one and a differential score of negative one. In a tie for fourth place, we had the Philadelphia for Alligators and the New York Mankeys, both with 1-1 one vic one, one victor... Uh, Ah, records and a positive one differential score. In third place, we had the Toronto Tokikis, who were one and one with a differential score of two. Uh, Pittsburgh Pichus were two and zero oh and had a differential score of one. And then the Tucson Terrakions uh, were number one that week uh, with a two zero -oh uh, score record, differential score of four. So now we're going to move on to week three. Uh, this was the one that I had to wait till I got back from vacation to actually watch, so I've been doing that all this last week. Uh, we had the Chicago Buffalons taking on the Tucson Terrakions in another very long match that almost went to time, uh, but it was a 2-0 victory in favor of the Chicago Buffalons. Uh, the MVP of the match actually came to a, I believe it was a Scarf Mianshaw from the Chicago Buffalons who did manage to pick up four kills that week. Uh, moving on, we had the Carolina Keldios taking on the Pittsburgh Pichus, and in a 5-0 victory, it came down to the uh, Pittsburgh Pichus win. Uh, MVP of the match was the Tapu Koko, who did manage to take out three uh, Mons this week or that particular week. Uh, in our next matchup, we have the New York Mankeys taking on the Toronto Tokikis, and it was a 4-0 victory in favor of the Toronto Tokikis. Uh, MVP of the match came down to, uh, looks like, Cartana, who did manage to pick up uh, two kills in that matchup. Final match of the week, we had the Grand Canyon Greninjas taking on the Philadelphia for Alligators, and it was a 1-0 victory in favor of the Philadelphia for Alligators. MVP of the match came down to the for Alligator, uh, who managed to pick up two uh, knockouts in Week 3. So then at the end of Week 3, uh, the rankings are fairly similar with a few minor differences. Uh, Carolina Keldios, uh, bottom of the rankings uh, with 0-3 record, differential score of negative 11 at this point. Um, 
And in seventh place, we have the Grand Canyon Greninjas, who are also 0-3, but their differential score was only a negative 7. Uh, New York Mankeys falling down a bit uh, with a 1-2 record and a negative 3 differential. Uh, Chicago Buffalons moving up a tiny bit, have a 2-1 record and a positive differential score of 1. Uh, Tucson Terrakions taking a bit of a fall from their first place in Week 2 uh, to fourth place, who have a 2-1 and one record and a differential score of 2. Actually, my bad. Uh, they're tied in second place. Um, they're tied in third place with the Philadelphia for Alligators, who also had a 2-1 to one record and a differential score of 2. Uh, Toronto Tokikis making a big leap into second place, 2-1 to one record, different score of six and that leaves our Pittsburgh Pichus um, with undefeated at this point with a 3-0 record and a differential score of six now before I get into the week four resort results uh, which are the most current ones there were um, this was the week that the teams were allowed to make any changes. Now, unlike past seasons, uh, where they can trade amongst each other for the next several weeks, they only had one week where they basically was a free agency selection. So they can drop any Mon on their team for another Mon in the same tier that was not already drafted. And I have the image up here. I think it is this. Nope, that's the wrong one. Sorry. Uh, so this one, and as we can see here, uh, all the different free agency trades. Carolina Keldeos dropping the Porygon 2, which I don't even think they brought it all this season in favor of Pangoro. Uh, Grand Canyon Greninja's dropping the Jellison for the... Um, is I can't remember. I think it's Pilosand. I can't remember the name as well. Uh, New York Mankeys dropping a Lola Mola for the Primarina. Uh, Tucson Terrakions dropping uh, their Tyranitar for Clefable. Uh, Toronto Tokikis dropping the Slowbro uh, for the Sneasel. Uh, Philadelphia and Chicago both electing not to make any changes on their team, so that'll be interesting to see if that plays any factor for the remaining weeks. And then the Pittsburgh Pichus dropping the Steelix in favor of the uh, Savali Steel form on it. So, uh, but that was all the changes that went into effect, and that, of course, started week four. Uh, so now we're going to go into last week's results. Uh, so for week four, we start with the Philadelphia for Alligators. So like I said, they were two and one, uh, taking on the Toronto Tokikis, who were also two and one. And it was a 3 0 victory in favor of the Toronto Tokikis. Uh, the MVP of the match is the Charizard, who did manage to pick up uh, three knockouts during the matchup. Up next, we had the New York Mankeys versus the Chicago Buffalons. Uh, New York Mankeys, one and two. Buffalons were two and one going into it. And in what I consider a bit of a surprise upset, uh, just, you know, due to the fact that, you know, the New York Mankeys coach, Shady Penguin, has had more battling experience, I feel, compared to uh, Chicago Buffalons and Sacred Fire Nick. Um I expected it to go the complete other direction, but it was a 5-0 victory in favor of the Chicago Buffalons. A few misplays from Shady uh, kind of cost him the match for the second week in a row, it looks like. He's made a few misplays that just kind of unraveled the entirety of the game for him, causing him to lose. Hopefully, Week 5 can make a few changes for that. Uh, MVP of the Buffalons, it's kind of a mix. I would say like the Celestila that really... Uh, surprised uh, Shady with the fact that it was a um, had a totemize as well as uh, what was it weakness policy on the Celestila managing to pick up three kills and then the Megalodios that came in and just swept the rest of the team uh, both of which getting three kills this week. Uh, the next matchup, we had the Tucson Terrakions, who were 2-1, and one, taking on the Carolina Keldeos, looking to try and get their first win of the season. And it came down, it was a 2-0 victory for the Tucson Terrakions. Uh, MVP of the match was the Flygon uh, from Tucson, who did manage to pick up two kills this week. And then finally, uh, we had the Pittsburgh Pichus, uh, the undefeated team, going up against the only other team uh, still, you know, without a win, the Grand Canyon Greninjas. And it was a 3-0 victory in favor of the Pittsburgh Pichus. Uh, MVP of the match comes to, I'd say, like the Victini, who did manage to pick up two kills this week. So moving on into the rankings uh, for... Week four, uh, in eighth place, uh, we have the Carolina Keldeos still still looking for that first win. Uh, zero and four, but their differential score is now a negative uh, thirteen. I'm pretty sure Carolina Keldeos are now officially uh, like 
a few of these teams are officially out of playoff contention for the most part, as there are only three weeks left in the regular season. Uh, Grand Canyon Greninjas also unfortunately out of playoff contention. 0-4 uh, so far after four weeks and a differential score of negative 10. Uh, sixth place uh, right now we have the New York Mankeys, who are 1-3 with a differential score of negative 8. Um, the rest of these teams still have a chance at playoff contention for it. It all just depends on how the other teams fare. Like, you know, the rest of these teams still have a chance of making playoffs. It just all depends on how well they actually all will play. Uh, fifth place this week, uh, we have Philadelphia for Alligators. They are now 2-2. Two and two. Their differential score is now a negative 1. Uh, Tucson Terrakions, bouncing back after the week three, are now three and one with a differential score of three. Uh, Chicago Buffalons still continuing to surprise, third place after week four, uh, three and one with a differential score of six. Uh, Toronto Tokikis still staying in place at, at uh, the second place spot, three and one differential score of nine. And then finally, the undefeated team of the Pittsburgh Pichus, four and zero, oh, um, with their differential score of negative eight. But that is going to go ahead and wrap it up with this video. I'm probably going to have a video up shortly after this one goes up. Uh, I'm going to try and do a week five preview, uh, talking about uh, the matchups for the week. So uh, hopefully, I'll have that up very shortly as well if you do enjoy this video you know i hope you leave a like let me know down below if you enjoy this and i'm sorry for missing the last several weeks but like i said moving forward unless i have another weekend where they have three hour long matchups practically for it i should be good to finish off the rest of the season and i'll also do my standard at the end of the season like top 10 or top 15 uh mons review for all the mons with the best knockouts or best records for the season but thank you all very much again for watching you have yourselves a good day take care and good night